I know it's your phone and you go try to your privacy. But you know I'm asking for your password now. Mm. It's becoming more than necessary now. Every night, almost the same time. Last night you had a message, I didn't talk about it. The other night, almost at the same time, almost midnight, I want the password. I'm no. counting one. I know. Password. Mm -mm. Two. No, I won't give it to you. Three. I said I won't give it to you. Can you unlock this thing? No. Four. I I'm counting. Give the password. Please just give me the number. Mm -mm. I won't. How many times am I going to talk about this thing? The password. Up to now. Password. The world is currently experiencing a growing issue of gender-based violence, GBV, which is a big problem that Zambia as a country is not immune to. Gender-based violence manifests in many forms, and these include spouse battery, defilement, incest, sexual harassment, property grabbing, and harmful traditional practices, among others. Like the noble eagle on the Zambian flag, it is the inspiration of government and its partners to rise above this problem and indeed combat gender-based violence. Which food? I want food. I, I, I am here waiting for you to bring. Food. There's no food. Hmm? We are waiting for you so that we can eat. There's no food. There's no food. There's no food. In Zambia, these forms of violence are affecting many lives of people and hence impact negatively on human and national development. Gender based violence is strongly characterized by gender inequalities and cultural norms that promote discrimination, especially against women. I want to declare before you that I will never beat my wife. I will stop it. <laughs> it is unfortunate that sexual and gender-based violence is a deeply entrenched phenomenon in this country. This should not be accepted by anyone as normal behavior because it is not part of Zambian culture. The perpetrators of sexual and gender based violence should be exposed and dealt with in accordance with the laws of this nation. The commitment by government is clearly seen when the President of Zambia, His Excellency Mr. Rupia Bwezani Banda, through the Minister of Gender, Honorable Sarah Saifwanda, made a key statement on government's commitment to fight gender-based violence. This was at the official launch of the communication strategy. Whatever I'm going to read, it is the words of the head of state. Our theme for this campaign is abuse. Just stop it. I want to, to speak especially women, please. Abuse. Just stop it. We should and it's a must. We should stop it. For in every minute that passes, a woman in every nation, from every class, culture and religion, is struck by the violence. This challenges us to work resolutely to create a gender violence free society in Zambia. So Zambia, Honorable Minister for Community, you're on the right step. And congratulations. <laughs> Honorable Minister, ladies and gentlemen, as we gather today to witness the launch of this national communication campaign, we should reaffirm our commitment to ending violence in the lives of children and women. Gender based violence is a human rights abuse and it should be treated as such. Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to dealing with gender issues, there should be no choice between who gets service. It may be a man, boy, girl, woman, or just an individual who needs some help. 
we are all equal, and that is what Zambia is striving to achieve, and that is why we salute His Excellency for moving his cabinet in that direction. Is it signing? Yes, you sign now. To effectively deal with the problem of gender-based violence, partnership is cardinal. Government, UNICEF, and other partners have come together and carried out sensitization programs as well as provide appropriate support services through the one-stop centers. In an effort to fight the scourge, government and its partners have come up with a strategy that deals with the problem of gender-based violence from two dimensions. And these are, one, to raise awareness on the issue as well as empower people with knowledge and skills on how to prevent gender-based violence. Two, to provide appropriate services to the survivors of sexual and gender-based violence through the one-stop centers. In order to contain the overwhelming effects of GBV in Mansa, the government, UNICEF and other partners officially launched a one-stop center. The overall goal of the communication strategy and the one-stop center is to work towards addressing and decreasing gender-based violence through the provision of information to improve knowledge, challenge perceptions, influence behavior, and provide treatment and other services to survivors of this terrible vice. In Mansa, debates were conducted and the outcome was overwhelming. I'm standing here firmly proposing to a motion which, are, which states poverty and ignorance are the major causes of human trafficking. It is my duty as a best speaker to define some of the key words involved in the symposium. Allow me to quote from the Collins New School Dictionary from page 646, where it states poverty is a state of being very poor, end of quotation. And page 424, where it states if you're ignorant about something, you don't know about it, end of quotation. And on page 900, where it states trafficking in something is an illegal trade in them, end of quotation. May a kind moderator pass this to a panel of judges for further verification. Okay. Edutainment is the best communication so to behavior uh, change and is the basis for these awareness campaigns through music roadshows. In an effort to reach out to a wider audience, government, UNICEF and other partners are also carrying out gender-based violence programs on Zambia National Broadcasting Corporation, ZNBC, television and radio stations. Child trafficking. These are girls that have been exposed to sex 
activities at a very tender age. What are some of the measures that you've put in place to make sure that you protect these children, especially from defilement? Anybody who has got a, or who commits sexual offenses against a child who is under 16 commits defilement. On these programs, a panel of experts from various organizations were brought together to discuss issues relating to gender-based violence. Yes, sexual abuse, all forms of abuse. Yes, abuse. Listeners and viewers would give feedback on the subjects through SMS. This is to enhance the reach of messages. The aim is to make information on gender-based violence more accessible to the general public. So instead of communicating you know, verbally, you become physical. So the problem with men, and I agree with this. Israel film is not going to be sane. Film is child abuse, not child labor. Lutahe, luto, 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 child abuse, ni child labor. Documentary films are very effective tools in communication for behavior change. Documentary films easily engage with audiences because they are entertaining and depict reality. The aim is to sensitize the people, provoke debate, and ultimately draw up recommendations on how to deal with issues concerning gender-based violence. Using mobile video shows as a behavior change communication tool proved to be very effective in the community. <laughs> This created a platform where people interact and discuss issues that affect them. Dinas, a 15-year-old girl, has endured the harshest form of disciplinary action which left her severely traumatized with painful body injuries. She is a victim of harmful practice a form of violence that arises from exercising culturally accepted corrective measures. Unfortunately, in her case, the form of punishment that was meant to discipline her resulted into severe injuries and trauma. Because the, the first layer came out, even this side, all the layers are out, except for the back. The skin came out? Yes, the Just whole of no it. No skin this time. Yeah. She's saying that a whip is the one that did that. Is it a whip can do such a thing? Yeah, sometimes. In an effort to discipline their children, parents sometimes lose their temper and unintentionally end up hurting their children so badly that they sustain permanent body injuries, as is the case of Dinas. A few days after amputation, Dinas passed away. May her soul rest in eternal peace. Kairi Marish wa fintunga fi ago jitigira. Muti ma fi wa ti mandi ni. I'm not for you. I'm not for you. Istari on se wa ti kuchega wa chega kun fo bukari. It is a very unfortunate situation um, where a parent, especially a mother, abuses her own daughter, inflicting so much pain that um, the trauma actually causes death. Um, as you can see, 
from the children who have remained behind because the mother has been locked up and the husband as well. You know, the suffering has continued because where she is, she's got twins, she's got children who have gone with her in cells, which is also not acceptable. But uh, the situation as it is, as we have heard from their father, you know, it's uh, something that he can't do anything about because the, fa the children at the moment need their mother. They're seven months old and uh, he feels they shouldn't be separated. So abusing a child really, in whatever, to whatever extent, shouldn't be allowed and it shouldn't be tolerated. It was clear that the impact was achieved at various levels of the campaign. It further encouraged people, including children, to muster up courage and speak up for their rights. Me, as for me, it's a contribution to the parents. They say, I don't want to say, I don't want to say, So our parents, um, when we err, it's better for them to cancel us. If they think uh, the situation is beyond their control, they are churches, we fellowship in different congregations, they can either take us to the father or the pastor for counseling, because maybe they failed, rather than beating us up to a certain extent, whereby a girl even had to lose her life. Who knows? Maybe she was about to be the president and should have changed a lot of things. So it's better our parents cancel us than beat us up in such a manner. I'm really touched. Now I'd like to ask the parents sitting in front here, I believe they're also parents, what crime can a child commit that could lead a mother to beating up a child the way she did? Is it because you're standing with a boy in the streets or other issues? What burden can, did that child commit? Or what burden can we children commit to our parents for them to hurt us so much? and put the lives, our lives in danger, like they put her life in danger. There is no crime that a child can do to deserve such a punishment. But that's a statement to the parents of this country that if we as children, we, it's possible for us to err. And where we err, it's up to you to correct us. That's why we are children. Parents have the responsibility to correct the children. And children have the responsibility also to be responsible in their own way. But where they fail, they should not be treated as we saw in the movie. That was too harsh. I would love to thank the UNICEF organization for the work well done and for the hard work that they're putting in to like, um, build us up as children because they've really done a lot to us and they've motivated us in a lot of uh, ways in such a way that we're so much behind and we never knew a lot of things about uh, gender-based violence. So uh, the advice that I can give them is that um, they should as well go into those deep typical villages to educate people, there are a lot of people out there who are so much dormant about this issue, so that they can also gain some knowledge like we've learned. And the premise that we can make to them is that we're also going to do our best, our level best, in um, uh, educating everyone about this information. And everyone should be aware that child abuse is um, an issue which should not be practiced, but abashed. Taking the documentaries to a traveling audience was another exciting experience. The disc is about violence, right? Uh, wife, uh, spouse abuse, and child abuse. We have to try to get abused in one hand, our case. We can see this old damper. We can see the comment where necessary. We can see the comment where necessary. People who are on a journey are indeed message bearers and will continue to disseminate the information to many who could not have a chance to watch the videos. Yes, I've watched um, these videos. It's uh, very encouraging. And at the same time, it is an eye-opener to us, especially those of us who've got uh, a girl, girl child, in the sense that um, we should develop that relationship to be finding out Whenever our children come from school, how was your school? What have you been doing? How is it? Because when a child, something has happened to a child at school, 
she will be depressed. She won't be very happy. You see, there, there, there are certain signs that would tell that something really happened at school. Uh, the part that has really touched me most uh, is the one where the child was sexually abused by the teacher. A teacher who was supposed to help her brighten up her future, grow up into a responsible citizen, is the one who actually led to her destruction. The story that I have, it happened yesterday. I went to Mungwa to mourn my brother there. Actually, it's on harsh cultural practices. Now, my brother was married to three women. Now, when it came to the so-called cleansing in the evening, they asked for a man to cleanse those women. So I told them that that the old system where women must be cleansed through sex is outdated. It's not there, and we have nobody who can do that. So they said, no, what it should be, the women will strip naked, and a man will strip naked. Then he will be rolling on the thighs of the women. And that was all. Then I said, even that one is inhuman. So they asked me what should be done. And I said, no, or what we shall do, we shall choose an administrator. Then he will tell those, those women that in the name of God, since our brother has died, this is God's wish. You are free in your life, you can go and I believe that is all. I saw the three women coming from the bush clad with mud all over the body. <laughs> so I just looked and said, what is that? I said, no, the women themselves insisted that they should be smeared with it, mud and then be washed with the herbs. So in my view, what came up into my mind is that these cultural practices sometimes, they are caused by the women themselves because of the deep-rooted belief that if this is not done, something can be done. Advocacy through workshops and mobile video shows for traditional leaders and other influential people in the communities is key to combating the scourge. Please, if I can beg of you a few more things, re-familiarize yourselves with the National Gender Policy and Action Plan, there is such a thing. Um, and uh, if you can, establish human rights uh, and gender committees or gender-based violence committees and trafficking committees in your uh, chiefdoms. Create an enabling environment. What I mean with that is open up, talk about it. What comes out in daylight will no longer be there. Create programs, create activities around these problems. And maybe very most importantly, create a men's network around this. Because men need to talk among men. Why is this happening? What can they themselves do to change this? <laughs> As part of advocacy strategies, workshops and mobile video shows are held to enlighten the people such as chiefs on the devastating effects of gender-based violence and also lobby their support so that they can get involved, act and stop gender-based violence in their areas of authority. Thank you. I'm deeply moved by the documentaries we've just seen. It causes my heart to bleed a lot. And indeed, as all the other highnesses have said, we need to team up and network in order to make our society a better place to live in, a safer place for everybody. This is a scandal of our time, at a time such as this, to find that there can be such an extent of disciplining of, child, of children, which is just an abuse and killing of children. I think we can no longer afford to keep quiet while we see such injustices going on. I am very touched with all the three films which I've just seen. More especially with the children. I have experience from a friend whose beautiful daughter was abused by, the, by one of the teachers at that boarding school. She ended up committing suicide. Now I can, say, I can confirm what happened. We need something which will be repeated, you know, on media. 
Beat on TV, we have seen people passing time singing. What we do is just singing. When we, when we have such important things happening, why don't we repeatedly show these things on, me, on, on TV and uh, radios and so on, so that uh, it rings bells in the people's minds. Especially teachers and the uh, 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 property grabbers, they will know, if they want to act, they know that when, when they hear an advert or whatever, which is being said on the media, it will remind them not to do it. This workshop is actually an eye-opener. So many things that were hidden, they come out. So as soon as I get back, I'll go down to my community. I want to bring in the village headmen and hold a workshop at my TFDOM level to get them involved, to show them these documentaries that we saw here so that it can change their mindset. It is a fight and I have accepted myself. When I accept to do something, I go flat out. And this is what I'll be doing. I have talked to the, to the UNICEF representative. I'll be seeing her to help me begin this program in my GP. You know? Uh, this workshop has been of uh, great importance because uh, it has integrated us some new knowledge that uh, we did not know. Uh, it was so critical actually when we were, we are being shown some videos on uh, a lot of vices on child abuse and uh, on the battering of women as well as uh, violence that is being basic violence that is committed sexually that has has brought us it's an eye opener it's a lamb limelight to many zambians and i, I should believe that uh, with this knowledge impacted in us we also try to disseminate it to the lo lowest level so that everyone understands the human rights in nature in our in our country one thing i'm sure about is that they have said uh, violations of human rights are not their culture yeah. that somebody is doing that in the name of culture but as far as they are concerned wife battery child defilement and trafficking of human beings is not their culture so i'm confident that at uh, this work this fight against child development, trafficking and gender-based violence will one day be one, starting from Zambia. Thank you very much. Combating gender-based violence through prevention and coordinated responses initiates a new method for fighting developmental problems in Zambia. And to sustain these interventions, there is need for partners to continue strengthening partnerships while getting more players on board. Therefore, the Partnership Against Gender-Based Violence would like to extend warm invitations to all interested parties to be part of this new innovation.